So today I'm going to be taking a look at one of the newest watches from Ferrer. It is this new 36mm GMT. It's a pretty interesting watch and let's take a closer look at it. So we have a diameter of 35.8, lug to lug of 41.6, height of 11.5, and a lug width of 20mm. Some other general specifications for the watch, we're going to have the Salita SW330 movement beating away in here. This is the top grade version. It obviously has that nice Ferrer customized rotor as well. We have a sapphire crystal on the case back as well as the case front. The front sapphire crystal has an inner AR coating, which leans a little bit blue, which you do see at some angles, a little hard to capture here. Super Luminova for all the indices and the hands as well. Uh, one thing to note is they don't really state which type of Super Luminova they I use. I assume it's X1 Super Luminova because it does lean a little bit more uh, bluish and it doesn't appear too green uh, when it's not loomed up. The watch has 100 meters of state of water resistance and the crown is just regular push-pull, not screw-down. And last but not least, the watch retails directly from Fair for $1,450, at least at this moment when you convert to US. Uh, and that is on the leather strap. I believe it's about $20 cheaper if you go for a rubber. Starting with the dial of this watch, and I think this is the most interesting and the most uh, pressing reason, I guess you can say, why someone would buy this model or buy this uh, line from Ferrer. We do have a simple Arabic style layout here for all the numerals, and then we do have smaller Arabics on the outside and the 24 hour scale for the GMT hand. A little harder to see, but you definitely can see them a little bit more visibly down here at the six o'clock at the moment. We have what Fair considers a three-part dial. We have this sunken down inner middle section, which I think looks pretty good, pretty high quality. We have the main base outer section here. And we have the last little section in the edge of this crystal here, which is kind of in the chapter ring. And this is kind of like an additional seconds track, even though we kind of have that motif already throughout the dial. It, I like it though because it makes a little pop of white against the rest of the dial and adds a little bit of contrast and I think it looks pretty good. Simple syringe handset here done in kind of this grayish tone. I don't really know what they use to coat it, but it is coated. We have of course this kind of magenta-ish, red-ish uh, seconds hand which has the arrow at the very top and then another arrowed hand which is now the GMT done in this blue lacquered finish. All the colors I think work very well in this dial. We have pink, we have reds, we have blues, uh, white as well of course, and I think it all works very harmoniously. It looks good, it's playful but not too playful, and I think Farrah did a really good job on you know <laughs> their color theory in a sense. Moving the minutes hand a little bit, we do see we have this circular cutout at 3 o'clock for the date window. Uh, it is nice because the date is color matched, so it has a pink uh, tone just like the rest of the dial and a black date. I think it ties in really well with the rest of the dial. It's very discreet. Uh, sometimes you don't really notice it's there. Uh, one thing you might find as a con, I guess you could say, is the fact that although it is color matched and it's nice aesthetically, it might be a little bit harder to read for some because it, <laughs> it does blend in. And then the text of the watch is done really well. It's very minimal. We have Fairy Universal and the triangular logo here at the 12 o'clock and then GMT Automatic at the six, and then at the actual six, we have Swiss made. So they did keep the text very minimal here. They didn't really do anything they didn't have to. Uh, it's very clean, it's very symmetrical, and I do really like how they executed it. What I really enjoy about this Ferro dial and the rest of this GMT series is really that they went for a GMT design that's not overly cluttered, or it really doesn't appear cluttered. I guess one byproduct of that is the GMT track is very subtle and can be kind of hard to read at times. I don't have any issue with it. It does take more of a second to look at it. It's not necessarily a GMT you can read easily on a glance. But as it stands, I think it's still functional. Uh, it's not a bad thing to have to keep looking at your watch, I guess you could say, and you know, stare at it for an extra moment. I mean, you, you paid good money. Why not stare at it? Uh, and yeah, I think it is a cool GMT. I like the way it's executed. and. I like the watch face. And lastly, before moving on, we have this beautiful pink sunburst dial. And what I really like is this is a very subtle sunburst finish. Obviously, I have a little bit of a studio lighting situation and it makes it feel a little bit aggressive at times. But even then, you can kind of just tell it's not the most, uh, yeah, just aggressive dial. You don't have huge bow tie effects. You can see a little bit here, the lighter sections versus the darker sections. But I can tell you in person, it's not as dramatic. It's a very subtle gradient in a sense. And at certain angles, you just get a full flat, fully colored dial, especially like if you're in shaded light. But in more direct sunlight, that sunburst effect does pop out, but it's never overly aggressive or feeling cheap. It's very premium feeling and gives you a good amount of depth of color from like a deeper pink to more of a bubblegum color, uh, depending on the angle. 
So taking a look at the watch in natural sunlight, we see when you have it in the shade, you have this beautiful kind of monotone pink, almost lacquer type finish to the dial, and the, all the colors really pop well against that base color. Whereas when you get into the sunlight at off angles, it does have that same pink lacquered feel, but in direct, direct light, you have this almost coppery, sunbursty uh, pink tone that really comes out and plays. So it is a pretty dynamic dial. It does change a lot between the shade and the sunlight, and I like it. It has a lot more life than I would have expected it to, and is really well executed sunburst. So taking a look at the dial here, we can see that sunburst effect is done very finely. You can't even at some angles make out all those like distinct little uh, webs or brushes or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's very finely done, and because of that, of course, you get that more subtle sunburst, and I really dig the effect. You can also see from this magnification that you have that very deep step down from that middle dial up to the more base one. I think it just comes together really nice on the wrist and it looks just visually really interesting. All the numerals are done very well. They have a three-dimensionality to them. What is pretty nice is you have both loom on the regular uh, time-telling Arabics, but you have loom as well for this 24-hour scale for the GMT hand. So although it's a smaller surface area, although it's not going to be very bright, it's cool that they included that. And I think it's also important that they included that because I think had they gone for more of a pure white text for the 24-hour scale, it would have looked a little bit too at odds with the actual regular Arabic scale. You can see that all the Arabics are nicely lined in black to give it a little bit more contrast. It is an inky black layer. I maybe would prefer to see a blue tone used just because it would have felt a little bit more at home with the dial. That's just my personal preference. Uh, possibly it could have looked bad because they maybe tested it and didn't like it. I don't know, but I think that would have been a cool a uh, little design detail touch. You do see a small imperfection there next to the eight with that little tiny little uh, black piece of dust on the dial. And I also found a little imperfection here in the Ferrer logo, tiny little white piece there. But as far as that goes, I mean, there really aren't any other imperfections on the dial from what I can see. So it is a very clean, well QC'd, uh, pretty nicely executed dial um, and I've seen much worse for much more expensive pieces, so Farrah did a really good job on this. Looking at the date window, we can see it's pretty well executed, a nice little step down to that pink date disc. Again, I don't think the date disc is uh, in that same sun ray finish as the dial is, but it still has this nice pink tone, and I think that maybe helps a little bit with the contrast of helping uh, you actually read it better that it's not in that exact same finish. Looking at the text for a second, we see it's decently well done. I don't think it's as three-dimensional as it could be. There could be a little bit more life to it, but eh, not badly done overall. I don't know if these tiny little specks, like we have one there above the end, so, you know, tiny little speck that I found, and then one there in the seconds track next to that one. Uh, so I don't know if these small specks are uh, the kind of uh, falling off of the black printing on the dial. Don't know really what it is, but... They're very small QC issues and something that I'm like, okay, it's really not visible to the naked eye at all. And you really have to be of this uh, insane magnification to even see it. Looking at the hands, you can see how it's coated in this like grayish uh, pebbled type finish. I don't really know what does that and they, I don't really state it on the website. Or at the very least, I didn't find where they stated what they did to the hands. So for now, it's in this kind of like cementy looking finish. I don't love it. I think it contrasts a little bit with the watch, which <laughs> to be fair, maybe the reason for it, you know, adds legibility, but I maybe would have preferred a stainless steel, just adds a little bit more nice finish, especially for this price point. The lacquered hands on the other hand are actually done very well, very inky, really nice appearance to them. There's no splotches or uh, bad placements missing, especially at the ends. There's a nice bulbousness to the hands themselves. Uh, and I just do really appreciate how good the hands are done on this fair. Taking a quick look at this outer uh, kind of chapter ring area, you can see it's the white disc. Every kind of a uh, five minute mark is done in this blue tone, which I think is a nice touch. It is unfortunate because it's kind of hard to see, especially when the crystal kind of distorts the outer edge. So you don't notice this outside detail as much as if like it would have been just a flat topped crystal. You do see that extra kind of minutes, seconds track area that's done in this silver text and that's actually a little bit more three dimensional than some of the black text on the dial. Odd choice I think to add so much detail here when it's kind of lost on the wearer, but 
I'm glad to see they're going the extra mile when they don't have to. Overall, I think a really nice dial, beautiful colors, uh, all executed pretty well, and the QC issues are very, very minor, so uh, good job, fair. So moving on to the case of this watch, and I think this is much more simple than the dial. It is just a kind of no fuss, brushed vertically on the top, what is nice is we do have this kind of uh, concave bezel, which is executed pretty well. It has a beautiful light play about it and ties in really well with the case design. And then we have high polish everywhere else, even the case back. So you only really have mixes of finish at the very top of lugs, and we don't really have any chamfering or anything like that. So that would have been nice to see, especially at this, you know, $1,400, $1,500 price point. I think it should be almost uh, expected. But as it stands, very simple, no-nonsense case. You do not have that much of a thickness, especially since you take into account the crystals actually raised up, and this is a GMT. So it is nice to see it's really well wearing uh, and it's pretty you know, svelte. The crown does have a good amount of knurling. I would say the grip could be slightly better, a little bit more uh, three-dimensional or defined, because if you just could use a light touch, it's pretty easy to slip off. Your hands don't necessarily grip it right off the bat, but if you put a little force, not hard to grab. So the crown, I think, can be improved slightly, but with that being said, the action's beautiful. There's buttery, smooth wind to this. It's a very lovely movement to interact with. It's one of those watches where you wind it and you're like, am I actually winding it? There's not like a huge clicky feedback, not really a loud noise or sound to it. So it's one of those ones where every once in a while you were like, eh, let me put it up to my ear and make sure it's actually winding. So it's, it's a very buttery, smooth experience. And that same goes for the crown positions, for actually manipulating the day, or manipulating the actual GMT hand. The GMT hand does have a more defined click over as you're going through it, but again, it's not something that's gonna blow your socks off. Uh, and with the actual regular time telling setting, that is also super buttery smooth. We of course have the fair signature bronze crown inset into there. Looks pretty nice. It will age over time take it or leave it, it's not something you see overly often, so while it's new, it looks great. And once it kind of starts to patina, it's yeah, up to you whether or not you like it, but you can always refinish it a little bit. One thing I will note is they went for, of course, this concave bezel, and then kind of a box-shaped sapphire crystal rather than like a rounded one. And I think even if you don't go for a rounded one, that ties in more to the curvature of this bezel. I think it would have looked a little bit better if you made the crystal either slightly shorter or the bezel slightly taller to uh, kind of make this marriage between the crystal and the bezel feel a little bit smoother, feel like a little bit more of a easier transition. I don't think it's bad as it is, but I think it can be improved slightly. Looking at the case back, we have a very simple case back, pretty nice amount of movement to kind of body ratio. So 36 millimeter, clearly a great size. I would say the Selena movement isn't necessarily anything amazing to look at. I don't think perlage over the entire kind of plate of the movement is very premium looking. To me, perlaging is one of the most basic, simple looking of finishing techniques. I would have preferred maybe a striping, even a blasting technique. I think the rotor here looks the best, especially like the way that this middle area shines in the way that they have this fairer GMT text uh, in gold on the outboard. Really well executed rotor, movement under, obviously good, but not great aesthetically in my opinion. And then just some text on the outboard here. Uh, and although this is not the original strap, the original strap also does have quick release spring bars. Taking a quick look at the side just before we move on to how it wears, you can tell it has a pretty good, again, just thickness or lack of thickness. You don't have a huge amount of curvature to the mid case, but you have a little bit here towards the edges. It feels from the side very similar to an oyster case, even though it doesn't feel perfectly the same from the top just because the lugs are a little bit thinner. And that's something I think they could improve on a little bit. I do think the lugs could be just that slight bit thicker. They do feel a little bit thin, but not too bad. That being said, because it's relatively thin, because you have a slight little hump to the case back here, it does wear into the wrist really nicely and feel very uh, sleek and slim. So moving on to how this watch wears, earlier I was wearing the Speedmaster here, and this is about a 39 millimeter case. And here we have the fair sitting on my six and a half inch wrist. And I think you can tell it fits pretty perfectly. I think it looks very proportional. Uh, it's a really good size, not only for a watch, but for people with smaller wrists. I would say once you get up to maybe like a seven inch, 7.25, then you're kind of pushing it in terms of whether you're okay with wearing a smaller watch. Cause I'll easily go down to a 34, so like this, will look closer to like a 34, 35 millimeter on someone with a wrist of that size. But of course it always depends on how, you know, wide your wrist is across, not necessarily how big it is in circumference. 
But what I do really like is they kept the lugs fairly short. It's pretty compact. Uh, again, the lugs are a little bit thin, which isn't a bad look. It just is different than I'm used to. Not, I don't think I've had many watches with the lugs this thin. That's okay. <laughs> uh, from the side view, you can kind of tell, or like down the barrel view, it sits pretty flush to the wrist. It is really nice, comfortable. You have a lot of beautiful, soft, rounded edges on the case bottom and the case side. So as it kind of digs into your wrist, in a sense, you're not getting any harsh edges, it's not uncomfortable, it just really is a very comfortable watch to wear. Even the crown, when it pokes, doesn't really hurt or um, feel aggressive at all. If I move the watch up, I have closer to a six inch wrist here. You can still see very proportional. I think you probably go down to a five inch wrist, maybe four and a half, and it would still fit pretty perfectly. So this is a watch that can definitely be worn on a multitude of wrist sizes and still look really nice. Taking a look at the side view, you can tell definitely it just wears perfectly into that wrist there. Although there's not a curvature, it has that same Rolex effect of when it's a small enough case size uh, and it's not too thick, you don't need a lot of curvature because it just does wear well as long as the case back's not crazy. So this falls in that camp, wears well, looks good, doesn't look too tall at all. Uh, and yeah, it is a very comfortable watch to wear on wrist. So quickly, before moving on to some other straps, this one obviously is not the original. It has this beautiful uh, blue ostrich strap that I got off of eBay. I'll have it linked down below. I think it pairs really well with the dial. This blue tone really plays off the blue GMT hand, plays off the pink of the dial, really gives it this fun, you know, bubble gummy feel, but it's not too playful, I think. It gives it enough seriousness while still having a lot of color going on. And I think it's a really good combo. The combo I went from fairer is a little bit insane. It is the you know pinkest strap they have. This one definitely plays off the uh, seconds hand. It isn't color matched at all. The seconds hand is a little bit more red than the strap is, but I still do think it pairs well. It plays off the pink of the dial. It gives it uh, not tonal on tonal match, but you know in that same family. It's a pretty well constructed strap. I would say it is a little bit on the thick side. It definitely have a lot of padding up here and a little less padding down here. I don't love that style of strap where there's a lot of padding towards the uh, you know edge middle here but it does seem like it would break in and wear pretty well uh, and one thing i will say is it does have a lot of holes here so it does fit on a lot of different wrist sizes and the buckle is done really nicely it's not sitting perfectly flush because the strap still needs time to break in you can kind of tell it's floating a little bit there but with my setting i'm about one two three four five ish holes uh, from the very last which is rarer from a stock strap that still has like that much uh, hanging off. Uh, I would say if you're down to this last hole and you have that, you know, let's say five inch wrist, four and a half inch wrist, it probably will just be too long this other side. So I would look at other strap options because they don't offer a small size. But with that being said, this definitely will fit a variety of different wrist sizes. Looks good, pairs pretty well with the watch and it's pretty good for a OEM strap. Next, taking the pink up to pretty much 11. Uh, this is, I think, an awesome combo. It does almost perfectly match the dial, and at some angles, it really does perfectly match the dial. This is a beautiful, I believe they call it pink lemonade uh, leather strap from Key Piece, link down below. Uh, I think it looks great, very comfortable strap, a little less uh, padded than the original is, and I think this is a good amount of padding. I believe it's like two and a half millimeters which I find is kind of that perfect sweet spot. Looks, in my opinion, perfect on this watch, pretty much made for it, and let's get it on wrist. Kind of like the uh, strap that Ferrer was supposed to make for it in a sense. Really cool, definitely makes it pink, <laughs> uh, and I think it just looks really good on it, especially if you're not afraid of pink, it looks awesome. For the more conservative of you out there, we have this very simple, clean, gray uh, new buck strap from Deluxe. I think this also pairs amazingly with the watch. Uh, gray is obviously very color neutral. I think it lets the pink pop, but not as much as a pink overload as we had with the last strap. And I think it just looks really good. Toned down, not too dressy, not too casual. Really good combo. I think you can visually tell the strap's a little bit thinner, and I think on this watch, uh, a little bit thinner is a good thing. It's not a very thick watch. It does take to a thin strap pretty well, especially since it's a smaller watch as well. Uh, this is a 20 to 16 taper, so I think that really feels at home with the smaller watch as well. And yeah, just really good combo, really simple, really clean. Let's the pink shine, but not too much. Next, if you want to add a little bit of color, but you don't want the color to be pink, uh, we have this nice brown strap from uh, Vario, kind of distressed Italian leather is what they consider it. If you look at your watch from the side exclusively, it matches really well with the bronze crown. The strap also has that nice 20 to 16 taper, which I think this watch feels at home on. 
doesn't look too bad in my opinion adds a little bit more color to the watch <laughs> not that it needed more color but yeah i enjoy it next if you want to add even more color to the watch and you don't want it to be pink again uh, you can go with this crazy, very dynamic purple strap from Has No Bounds. Uh, if you don't like how this looks, you're wrong and that's okay. Uh, I just think it looks amazing. It definitely brings a different feel to the watch. It's not as weirdly over the top as the full pink strap. It gives it a nice color and almost a little bit of a seriousness. Because you have this beautiful iridescent effect on the strap, I think it just gives a little bit more life to the watch than it had otherwise. I think it looks pretty good. Won't be for everyone, but I think it's a pretty cool strap, pretty cool effect that they have on this. I bought these in a couple of different colors that I think really just pair nicely with most watches uh, and add some color in your life, you know? And lastly, the strap to end all straps, the best strap ever made on planet Earth. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, there are some improvements that can be made to the strap, but it pairs well with most things and this watch is no exception. It looks really good. That white tone of the strap really matches with the white tone of the numerals. And I think even though this is a 20 to 20 taper, there is no taper on it, it still does feel good on the watch. It's relatively thin, plants it nicely on wrist, and yeah, let's just get it on. There we have it. Looks really good in my opinion. Again, summery, fun, pops, gives it a lot of color. Uh, the pink is definitely forefront. The white complements it perfectly. Uh, and I think it just is a really good combo. I'm surprised that Farrah doesn't offer like a white rubber option. Uh, I, would have, I would definitely buy that strap because we need better white rubber straps out there. And I don't know how well this will pick up on camera, but at certain angles, I don't know if it's because these hands have like a grayish tint to them, they can very slightly feel a little yellower than the uh, Arabics are, the lumen fill. I don't know how well it picks up here, but just keep that in mind if you're a stickler like me for loom. You will see that at certain areas or times of the day, but in direct sunlight, pretty much goes away. You can't notice a difference. So taking a look at the loom here, on first impression, it looks amazing. It's almost making the crystal glow. Uh, and at off angles like that, it looks pretty cool. Uh, you have the hands loomed, you have the uh, numerals loomed, and again, you have that 24 hour track and the pips in between loom, which is a really good effect. You can tell your GMT in the dark if you really need to. Uh, if I actually move these hands out of the way, you can see the GMT hand is also loomed. So really good job uh, on the loom presence, not necessarily on the application because it does die fairly easily. Uh, it's bright when you apply uh, kind of a UV light to it immediately, but it does die off pretty quickly. So Fair could do a better job on the loom, especially since we have those three dimensional markers that should in theory have a good amount of uh, surface to loom it into. The hands are definitely the brightest part by like a couple shades, I guess you can say, but again, it does die off fairly quick. Relooming and comparing to my Timex Snoopy, of course, Indiglo, the best kind of glow. Uh, it does obviously just have a, a little bit more surface area, a little more legible, uh, and at least when the fair is fully charged, it is just as legible as the Snoopy is. I can read the time perfectly. I can even read the GMT perfectly. Uh, but again, the Farrah does die off pretty quickly. You can see the hands are very much the brightest part, uh, which is odd because the hands don't have 3D loom to them as much as the indices you would think do. As it stands, Farrah needs to do a little bit better job on the loom. The pros and cons of this watch here, I think one of the biggest pros, at least for me, is the fact that it's a smaller watch. It comes in at 36 millimeters, which not only is rare to see in a GMT watch, but is a little bit harder to find nowadays. You are seeing some brands like Traska and a few others coming out with watches in that size, but it's nice to see uh, brands sizing down a little bit. They didn't do anything too crazy with the case shape. They made it very wearable. They kept the 20 millimeter lug width, uh, which doesn't feel awkward on this size at all or on this watch case, I should say. Uh, so everything feels well proportioned. If, fits comfortably, it's a good thickness, it's not too thick, not too thin, uh, and it just is a very comfortable and I think good size at 36. Moving on to my next pro, I think dial color is just a really big one for me. Uh, I do really like the fact they went with a pink dial, not only in the fact that I just really like pink and I think um, this kind of lighter, uh, more gentle shade tends to go with a lot of things. I think they also managed to give a lot of depth to this color itself. The fact that they went with a very subtle somber style that at sometimes can give it a little bit more depth, a little bit more darkness, and then others in direct sunlight give it a little bit more light. Uh, really keep your interest on this dial. And to me, it is a pink that kind of keeps your interest. It's not flat, it's not boring, uh, and it does really just look good. My last pro for the watch is I think Farrah did a really good job on this dial. And I think 
all the dial variations of this watch model uh, and keeping the colors relatively muted. Uh, sometimes her will add some really, you know, let's say questionable colors or uh, maybe have a little bit too much fun with the color palette and uh, add things where I'm like, it would have been a great watch if you just wouldn't have added that one more bit of yellow or a uh, bit of orange or whatever. Uh, with, but with this watch, they did pink, blue and white and, you know, another shade of red, basically. And it works. It all blends well together. They didn't add any third co color to kind of make it more complicated. It just looks very cohesive. All the colors blend well together and it feels harmonious. It doesn't feel like it's trying too hard, uh, but it's still playful enough. So moving on to cons, and one of the bigger cons for me is gonna be this grayish handset on the watch. When we zoomed in, it didn't really look too bad on the watch, but the more I wear it, the more I really look at it. Uh, it does just feel a little bit odd. There's no other element on the dial that quite matches it, uh, at least one that's not super visible. I guess you can say the outer track gray text or gray minutes track ties in, but it's kind of hard to see that aspect of the dial. And also the fact that you have the case that's so highly polished from like top view with that bezel or from the side view of the case, I think just regular silver polished hands would have tied in better. Maybe this grayish handset adds to legibility, but if that was the case, why not coat them in blue? Why not coat them in uh, even black? Or why not coat them in red? Uh, you could have added another fun color uh, or uh, just in more simple pure white, but then maybe the loom tones would have mismatched. Either way, <laughs> I don't think gray was the answer, and I think there would have been some better options. My last con for the watch is I just don't arguably see how uh, this is great value for money, you could say. You have the Trask guy, I forget what they call their GMT model, that's I think around five to seven hundred dollars. You have Baltic that has a GMT that's around a thousand dollars, give or take. Uh, you have Monta, which I believe has GMTs around eighteen hundred. So, uh, Monta is an outlier. I do think Fair more competes with the first two options, and I think at around a thousand dollars, it would be priced in a much more uh, not only competitive but sensical way without maybe adding more uh, metal applied elements to the watch dial or adding a bracelet to the watch. I don't think it completely deserves to be at the price point it's at, not to say that it's overcharging you. I think it's okay, but uh, I do think there could be some adjustments to the price. And just one thing to mention before I move on, it's not really a con to me, but the fact that it uses a true GMT movement, some people won't like. I prefer it, honestly. Uh, true GMT movement's a little complicated, or not complicated, but a hassle to use, especially when you have to change the date because you have to cycle all the way through to change the date because you're uh, moving the local hand rather than the GMT hand. Whereas with something like this, that's the desk GMT or whatever they call it, uh, you move the GMT hand complication when you move the crown one way and you move the date when you move the crown the other way. And to me, it's more useful, it's more convenient. Uh, uh, sure, I guess if you travel, it's more convenient to jump the local hour hand, but you can just as easily jump the GMT hand and track the times on that way. Realistically, a true GMT may be harder to make and that's okay, they're usually much more expensive. So I think at this price point and for functionality and fun, this is very doable. So final thoughts, and I do like this watch, I just don't love it. Uh, I really have been looking for a good pink watch to add to my collection. And while I did grow to like this pink dial a lot more over time, I just don't think this is the one. Uh, again, I just don't think uh, it has enough elements that stand alone enough to grab me. It is a good watch. It has a lot going for it. The colors are fun. The layout is clean. It doesn't feel cluttered for a GMT watch, which is really refreshing. And it's also not sporty as a GMT, which is, uh, I think, lacking really hard in most of the watch industry. Most GMTs are sports watches, and I don't think that has to be an exclusive thing. This watch is almost, in my opinion, banking on the funness of the colors rather than the build of the watch itself necessarily. Although you do have really well done numerals, they have some three dimensionality to it. Their loom, uh, 3D loom structures, the loom's not great. Uh, there's no metal applied elements on the watch, which usually make it a little bit more interesting. There is sure that kind of like layered feel about the dial, especially that kind of like sector middle section. And that is cool, uh, but I don't think it's purely enough, enough to, not enough to grab my attention. Uh, is it more interesting than just a flat dial, a plain GMT? Absolutely. But I just don't think it's like an end all be all, oh my God, this is such great value. This is super cool. It's more, if you love the color, you like the execution, you like the size, I think the size is gonna be a really good driving factor for this watch. There aren't really any other 36 millimeter GMTs out there that I can think of. 
So this is going to be one of those only ones that are going to be vying for your attention, vying for your wrist because of that. I do think it's a good watch. Just not a great watch, not the perfect watch, but <laughs> no watch ever is. Uh, I do think if you already like the look of it, you like the execution of it, you like the size of it, you'll probably be really happy with it. Uh, maybe if you like one of the other colors more, you'll be happy with it. Uh, but again, don't expect it to be maybe the end all be all. It's a good watch, doesn't do everything. The case shape maybe feels a little simple at times. The execution of the dial, a little bit simple at times, but it is fun. Anyway, those are just my thoughts. Thank you as always for watching the video. Hope you got something out of it and I'll see you in another one.